in the previous video I've told you that a free market economy left to itself under certain conditions will produce something that is Pareto efficient and by that I mean something uh, uh, or a situation in which no one can be made better off without someone else being made worse off now this has certain implications um, and I'm going to explain some of these implications in this video so the headline is Pareto and prices Pareto efficiency Pareto and prices and I'm going to focus on three conditions okay or three implications here one two and three okay the first is that we need all trades in the consumption market to be conducted basically you have to have to have efficiency in the consumption okay efficiency and consumption what does that mean well let's simplify and say only two goods and two people again it means that they have traded among themselves using those two goods and no further trades are possible you can't make anyone better off without making someone else sort of worse off but efficiency in consumption is not the only thing we want we also want efficiency in production okay that's the second condition here we need efficiency in production it's not enough that they actually trade the goods among themselves we also want to produce the goods in the most efficient manner as possible now even those two conditions are not enough because uh, and this is a silly example but let's, let's use left shoes as an example if we're very good at producing left shoes so we do that in the most efficient manner as possible we use the right amount of capital the right amount of labor and everything and it's a perfect balance and we give all those shoes the left shoes to the population and they trade these left shoes among themselves so they have an optimal amount um, and still that doesn't sound very efficient because there's no connection between a consumption market and a production market because people also want the right shoes for example so even if you produce something very efficiently and then give to people and they trade among themselves that's not itself going to be uh, enough you know we want efficiency in the, in the consumption production mix efficiency in mix okay now these three things they may sound abstract but they also have certain consequences or certain implications for the prices so we can look at prices and and see if we actually have efficiency in consumption or efficiency in production or efficiency in the mix okay but in order to show that we have to be a little bit more formal so let's just take one example efficiency in consumption okay what happens if you have two goods and you want to have efficiency consumption well the consumer tries to maximize the utility and you have two goods so you have x and you have y and they can maximize this but they have a budget constraint they can't just use you know buy how uh, how many x's and y's they want they they have to be within the budget so let's say price of x times the number of x you buy plus the price of y times the number of y's you buy has to be equal to your income okay so you try to maximize this given your budget constraint here now mathematically you can do that by forming what we call a Lagrange function and you have to maximize the Lagrange function which is just utility again then you have um, lambda times the constraint the constraint here was income subtract price of x times number of x price of y times the number of y okay this is the function you're going to try to maximize when you try to maximize the function you take the derivative with respect to the things that you can actually choose so you can choose how many x's you want and y's you want stuff like that and you want to set them to equal to zero so what is the derivative equal here well that's going to be the derivative of utility function with respect to x then if you take the derivative here well okay we get this and the price of x you do the same thing for y you take the derivative with respect to y and we get the derivative of the utility function with respect to y minus this price of y have to be equal to zero equal to zero now you see if you take this condition here and the second condition and put them together then we have
have the following results. The bar utility with respect to x, divide that by the utility with respect to y, has to be equal to the price of x divided by the price of y. Ah, the first condition here tells you that the ratio of this utility has to be equal to the ratio of the price between x and y. You can say a little bit more about that to make it more meaningful. What is this ratio here? Well, it's the marginal utility of x. So instead of saying this here, you can say that it's the marginal utility of x divided by the marginal utility of y, which has to be equal to the price ratio between x and y. Again, this may <laughs> sound a little bit abstract still, but the marginal utility of x is just how much more happy you become when you when you uh, get one more unit of x. Okay, so that has to be, and how much happy you become when you get the unit of y. So the so the ratio between those two things has to be equal to the price ratio between those goods. So if you know the price ratio, um, and you know the marginal utility, here, you know that well. If this condition is satisfied, then you have efficiency in consumption. And this here, whole thing, is sometimes called the marginal rate of substitution. Marginal rate of substitution. Okay. So instead of saying, oh, the marginal utility of X divided by the marginal utility of Y, you say the marginal rate of technical substitution. No, sorry, ma marginal rate of substitution. So there you go. You have a condition. Now, you can do the same thing for efficiency in production. But now you're not saying, you know, they're not maximizing utility and stuff like that. They're maximizing profit. Just a kind of company is maximizing profit and pr produce things. But you will get the same thing. Let's say in order to maximize um, uh, profit, um, you will minimize cost, for example. And cost compose is composed of how much labor you, you buy and how much capital you buy. So here you have the price of, instead of price legs, you'll have the price of labor, for example, which would be the wage rate, how much wage you pay, and how much labor you employ, plus the price of, of capital, which is the interest rate, times how much capital you buy. And that has to be equal to, to, to uh, uh, your, your budget, basically, how much you, you, can, you can buy. So, so you, can, you can try to you know, drive exactly the same thing, and you'll find the same thing that here, if you do that, it's the same structure. Then the result will be that um, the marginal rate of technical substitution, marginal rate of technical substitution between wages and between labor and capital has to be equal to the price ratio between uh, capital and labor. So you'll have wages here and interest rates here. That has to be equal to the marginal rate of technical substitution. Okay. So the first condition says that marginal rate, marginal rate of substitution has to be equal to the price ratio between x and y. The second condition tells you that the marginal rate of technical substitution has to be equal to the um, ratio between the prices here, wages divided by interest rate. The third condition tells you that the marginal rate of substitution has to be equal to the rate of the marginal rate of technical substitution. If all those four, those three conditions are satisfied, then we say, oh yes, the market is in uh, is Pareto efficient. Now, of course, often it will not be. Often one of these conditions will not be satisfied, and then the interesting question arises: Should we try to create regulation? For example, in introduce a tax for pollution or something that makes it more optimal. Is that possible? And what, what kind of tax? How should that be? And that's a, a topic for the next lecture.